Hi guys. Um, so I'll talk about what I've been up to lately. As you probably noticed, there are, there are Git trees now on kernel.org. I like to talk about what I'm doing about that and what I plan to do in the future. Um, I'd subdivide my tree into three major categories. That's hot fixes, that stuff's going to go into Linux in this RC window. Uh, memory management, which is going to go in the next merge window, and then non-MM, which is another concept which will go also in the next merge window. And that includes you know, OCFS2 and IA64, which I am the maintainer, and um, <laughs> ProcFS, and you name it, everything else, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of subsystems for which I have taken patches in the past, will take patches in the future, most of them empty at any point in time. And of course, I'll mainly be concentrating on the larger part, which is the MM part. All three of these things, hot fixes, MM and non-MM, I divide into two bits. One is the stable bit, which is a non-rebasing Git branch based on MM's master branch, which I'll cut around about RC2, RC3, with a plan to leave it there until the next RC2 or RC3, because so back mergers are naughty. On top of the stable material, which is a non-basing tree for Linus in the next merge window, I'll have the unstable tree, which will be, sorry, it's a quilt queue, and uh, that will be rebuilt on demand as I do releases. All of this material, MM uh, hotfix is unstable, MM unstable, non-MM stable, unstable, it's all rolled into a master branch called MM-everything, and that goes off to Stephen for inclusion in Linux Next. And I'll probably recut all these branches two, three times a week to keep everything nice and updated in Linux Next. Um, I like to keep things in a, in a quilt tree because it is so flexible. While well, things are churning and being stabilized and getting ready to go into the, um, the, un, the, into the stable branch. Um, I can and will, if prevailed upon to do so, do direct git pulls from your branches, but I don't think it works. I don't think I've ever seen a substantial patch set which got through unscathed. Um, a couple of years ago, 15, 20% of the MM patches I had were dash fixes. They're real functional code changes. And then there are all the changes to the change logs, which churned at a tremendous rate. Um, so my preferred approach is to stabilize, stabilize, stabilize. We decide, okay, this patch set is now ready to go into stable, MM-stable. And I'll talk a bit more in a few minutes about what I'd like to do around that process. Um, once we decide it goes into stable, I want to take the quilt patches, crunch them all together, fold in the fixes, do a final pass across the change logs, then merge them into a branch under MM stable, and that's hopefully where things sit. Now, of course, shit happens. I will eventually have to take a branch out and put it back in unstable or throw it away altogether. We can do that. Alternatively, if the originator of the patches, if the author really, really wants me to pull their git tree, well, I can. I'm going to have to hand all my stuff across to them, make sure what comes back to me is identical to what I already have, and I will check that. That's the easy part, but I'm also going to want to check all the change logs of what I had as well. I carry far less dash fix patches than I used to, mainly because I've got lazy. If you send me, if I'm on v4 and you send me v5, I used to go through it and go all the little v5 fixes so we could see what you changed. Nowadays, I just chuck out v4 silently and remerge v5. So I have less dash fix patches, but the code is still churning. And um, I don't know, it doesn't matter if you, I've seen it, if you're at version 11, you're at version 16, you've done absolutely everything you possibly can. As soon as it hits the tree, the shit hits the fan. I mean, poor old Git, how many times have we broken M68K? We always break M68K. <laughs> M68K yeah, so I would prefer to keep things in quilt tree. If prevailed upon to do so, yeah, I can send it back to you and you send it back to me, but it's latency and it's work and things can get lost. And incidentally, when I do drop your V4 series and merge your V5 series, I'll still keep all my little dash fix patches against V4. 
just to check whether you incorporated everything. And sometimes, oh, it still applies. The submitter missed, it, missed out on some fixes which I had, so I can, I can double check that. Um, branching structure. What I have at present for this cycle, it's really lame. The NM unstable branch is just a, gilt, a, quick, a, qu a quilt queue. Every patch is parented off its predecessor. Uh, I'll say sorry to Linus and try and get it and merge the whole lot in one hit. But then for the next merger window, I want, I want to do is go for a very flat structure where everything, every patch series ideally is based off master and they all get merged. And here, patch series could be a single patch. I, I'm, I think I'm looking at having a separate branch for every single individual patch, because if the scripting is right, that should be cheap. Implications being probably best if you were to target the MM master branch, which would be cut off RC2 or RC3, because we're going to remain there. But really, I don't care, because I'm going to quantify things. You know, you can work on last Linus main release. You can work off RC2. You can work off Linux mainline, you can work off Linux next. I'll figure it out. I'll base it on anything you like, really, whatever's most convenient. I don't base it on Windows NT, that would be a problem. Um, branch naming. So I expect after the next merge window, I have many, many, many branches. These branches will have long names. Um, if a patch series is in the unstable queue, it will be mm-unstable- dash, and the rest will come from your zero of n email. So you get to choose the name of the branch. And what I'm going to ask as I move on to the idea of topic branches is that within the subject of your patch set, which may be a single patch, please identify what, subs what topic you believe it belongs to. You know, I've had patches there, I'm trying to wonder, well, well, hell, what topic is this? It could be a memcg patch which changes three lines of memcontrol.c and 30 lines of vmscan.c. So by line count, it's a vmscan patch, but in fact, functionally, it's a memcg patch. So please, I'm going to ask the originator to decide what topic you think this is, and that will be reflected in the file name, in the name of the branch. And uh, the reason I want to do that is we can look at the branch name and directly relate that back to the subject of the email on the manual list. We can go both directions, which I think is pretty neat if we get the naming right. I'll do a large and boring uh, document, and once this is all settled, I'll get that into the documentation directory, which, so if people do it wrong, I can politely point them at this, this section 45A, please. <laughs> this is the process, please do that. I hate changing the subject on your emails because then they, we no longer can relate what I've got to what's on the mailing list. I can't relate that to the name of the patch. So I think getting the subject right and appropriate is going to help ease the process along. So I'm OK. You can choose whatever branch you, you is best suits your needs. I'm going to attempt to base your patch queue on on the master branch. Sometimes I may have to uh, branch it off one of my existing branches. That's OK. I'll make sure my tooling handles that. And the branch structure of these many branches will all be captured in the, my good old series file. So my quilt queue is also in kernel.org in a separate git tree. There'll be a stable link to the series file, which will describe the branch structure in some manner, which I'll describe. And uh, that, that'll be at a stable URL, and I update that several times a day when I'm working. Um, I think the only, if I've got a particular branch sitting in the MM stable queue, let's say it does something to a VM scan. My preference would be not to base your work on that, but base your work on RC3 unless you are really explicitly, logically working on somebody else's code, which is in this kernel cycle. And that's very rare. It's very rare for somebody to work on somebody else's patch set that hasn't gone into Linux yet. On the occasions where it does happen, it's the same person. You know, they've done one patch series and then another patch series which, which bases off that. So it's fairly rare, so a flat tree structure should work unless the amount of conflicts becomes totally unreasonable. 
topic branches. There's no other subsystems use topic branches. They don't make a lot of sense to me. If I've got a patch against VM scan that does one thing and another patch against VM scan that does another thing, they're unrelated. Each is its own topic. The only relation between them is they happen to hit on the same file and maybe textual conflicts. So I will have topic branches, but I think really the only reason to have one is so I can reasonably chunk stuff up to send into Linux rather than just enormous please pull the whole world. Now that's bad in a way because Linux pulls a VM scan topic and then doesn't pull uh, memcg for another couple of days, then we're sitting there in an untested state. He's got code which we've never run before, not on Linux next or anywhere before. But this has been happening forever. I don't send the entire quilt queue to Linux in one hit. I'll send them 100, then another 100, and then 70, and then we're done. There is a risk that we'll introduce a bug in one patch and then accidentally fix it in another one. I think it's only ever happened once. So there is a risk, and I'll dialogue it with them. I think the risk is pretty low. Um, so yeah, I ask you people to choose the name of the, of the patches and to allocate the subsystem it goes to. Now that's all patch wrangling shit. There are, there's some people shit on top of this. It's all very nice to have a stable, non-rebasing Git tree against which to do ongoing development. But that's only useful if we've got something in it. Um, last weekend, we were at RC4, and I went through all, the, all my various patch piles, saying, OK, what can I move in the stable branch? Series after series after series was not ready. A little, little cross marks. You know, I'm waiting for the reviewer to come back. I'm waiting for the submitter to respond to the reviewer. I'm waiting for this test results to come in. I'm waiting for this person who I think should review it to show Sunstein he's actually read it. We got bugs, everything. At RC4, halfway through the RC cycle, was not yet ready to go into the stable tree. So if we want this process to work, I, mean, I think we should be more expeditious about getting these patch sets nailed down. Just don't let things dangle on weeks after week after week. And so I will become more active about this and I will help. Um, I'll send little emails and they're almost always going to be private emails. I don't want to put people on the spot and embarrass them. I'm just going to ask, yeah, can you please respond to this one? I want you to understand where I'm coming from. I'm just trying to hurry things along. Yes, Miguel. Just, just a question. So um, one of the things that you uh, uh, have been doing is uh, to merge changes to your tree as soon as possible. And uh, um, one thing that I, and that might be really great in many cases, but one deficiency that I have found in that process is that this leads to a lot of fix, 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 fixes, mm -hmm. and also a unclear situation for the submitter, because uh, whenever you see your patch being merged into your tree, uh, you are almost uh, half done. So attention to that work uh, decreases considerably. Right. Uh, I and, uh, and that's probably the reason why you have those uh, waiting for somebody. So my question is, uh, would that be a process regression if uh, patches get really merged okay. after they, they are not having any comments like, I'm waiting for so somebody or something to happen? Um. I reread the email you sent me a couple of years ago on this topic, and yeah, it sounded that's what you just said sounded awfully familiar. I do actually skip version one a lot more than I used to. I don't do it visibly. I'll send a little note. The person say thanks. But I think I'll skip version one, or I'll let this person look at it, or we're, the tree's full right now. I just keep the originator, particularly if it's a new person, just let them know where we're at and what my thinking is. Please resend it. I'm going to wait for viewers to provide input. So I don't always aggressively leap on version one. And sorry, to a large extent, it depends who it comes from. Um, so if, so if, if a person thinks that my merge means, OK, my work here is done, that was an inexperienced person. I do like to provide guidance to those people to help them understand where things are coming from. Um, so that sort of happens under the hood. I always welcome people to send me a private email, you know, just 
send me an email saying, I don't think you should merge this yet, or I want to look at it, or I don't trust this. Just let me know what you're thinking. I'll, I'll take that on board. Does that cover? So uh, in general, I mean, I, I like your style of doing things that, that appeals to me, and it's been working out great for me. Um, sometimes I feel like we should push more for review before pulling a series into mm -hmm. into next, for example, because like lately we've seen lately we've been seeing quite a lot of breakages in next, and the patches in question were not reviewed yet. So um, I was wondering what we can do about that because obviously, like lately, there are a lot of code changes, and we have like limited review capacity. For example, I try to review a lot, but like the last couple of months, I was busy working on other topics that uh, took took longer than expected. So, like, I, I'm wondering if 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 that should be something to focus on. That like we only pull in pull in something after people looked over it and agreed that it's like in a decent shape. Or if you really want to go ahead and let's say you say skip version number one, um, I was wondering if, if that is like a good condition to put something in um, or really wait for until like, let's call it the sub maintainer, although that doesn't really exist, like says, oh yeah, like we can give this a shot. This might be worthwhile to expose to next or something like that. Um, yeah. yeah I, I don't think I want formal, get formal review to be gating on, on merging it in the next. Um, I'll do my best to look at it. I particularly see who it comes from. I eyeball it myself. I think this has got a good chance of going in. So I like to pipeline these things to attempt to accelerate the process, get them under runtime testing in next while these things are happening. But I have so many little notes to myself. You know, it's not going to proceed further until I think the appropriate people have looked at it. And as long as the submitter understands that, and again, if you do want to review this patch set but you don't have time, send me a little note and I'll make a little mark on it and I can help with that. But I think sort of overlapping the runtime testing, you know, PR bot tracker, fuzz testing, all that, alongside the review lets us get these sort of review level things and the runtime things happening concurrently. So, so and, Andrew, you said you kind of didn't want to call people out on hey, I'm waiting for you on this, but do you think there's room for more transparency? Like, there's, there, I think there's just the times I've, in terms of like saying, showing the state of the queue and saying this patch is especially waiting on more review, like can people perceive that in your patch file or is that private information for you? They certainly can. Okay. You know, if, 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 they, if they know to look and they know how I work. But this is why I'm become, I want to become more activist about this. You see, at present, the decision to move a patch set from unstable to stable is something I do very late in the piece, basically during the merge window, and I do under my own cognizance. I want to fix both those things. I don't want to do it late anymore. I want to move it up, you know, RC4, RC5, let's get it go this while I'll be poking people, can we please get this wrapped up? The other thing I haven't touched on yet is I don't want to make this decision on my own. Uh, people are fallible. Not just me, you know, I could miss an email, I could misinterpret an email, but also you people could fail. By failing to make it clear to me that you still have issues, so I could think everybody's cool. So what I'm going to do now, I'm not just going to take a patch set and move it into the stable branch. I want to run it by everybody else first. But I'm not going to say, is everybody okay if I merge it in, in the stable? I don't want to do that because then, then I'm sitting there waiting for this person to say yes, this person to say yes, this person to say hell yeah. And also I don't want to do that publicly because it'll put people on the spot. They're going, oh shit, people are waiting on me and they're going to go. And nobody's certain. You're never certain. How can you possibly be certain? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I am going to merge this two or three days from now. If nobody says anything, I'm going to put it in. Okay, and, and you can send me a private email if you like, if you're really stressed out about this, and, I, and we'll figure it out. But no, I want to solve these two issues of getting the thing into the stable tree very late and having to do it all by myself. And I'll do that with irritating little emails. Understand where I'm coming from. Now, I think this moving of a patch set or a patch from unstable to stable is a big deal. And so we need to concentrate around that a little bit. 
Now, when do we decide to move a patch set from unstable into stable into the non-rebasing git tree, which is off to Linux? It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, when we merge it, when I put it in the stable tree, let's say it's at RC5, we've got many more weeks of RC. We've got the next merge window. We've got all the next RC. That's three, four months we've got to get it up to production quality. And to be realistic, we've got probably another couple of entire kernel cycles before anybody uses this code in anger. So we have many, many, many months to sort out the last little 1%. We'll have a lot of pipelining going on in our kernel processes. Uh, let's use it. I mean, let's not throw any old shit in Linux's tree. Obviously, we need to be due diligent and do our best. Let, and, and we're not going to know what's wrong with it until more and more people roll it out and test it on more and more machines. But no, I think the, the criteria for moving something into stable is, does Linux want this? And is it good enough? It doesn't, it's, it shouldn't be, is it perfect? It's good enough. Uh, we can always fix the little shit later. Thank you for CC stable. That's wonderful. So yeah. when I ask, you know, I'm moving this, I plan to move this into stable in a few days' time, please ask yourself, do I really think Linux wants this feature? And do I think it will be production quality? Is this documented anywhere? Two, three months from now. Because actually, I was asked, I went around before coming here, I went to everyone in my department saying, what would you like me to bring? And one of the topics came out, I think it was exactly what you just said. Could we document the criteria of getting stuff into MM? That was actually almost verbatim what was asked. Like, you know, have something that we could say, this is what we, you know, if we look at this and we could say, hey, we passed this, it would likely move forward or whatnot, or maybe we could fix it or whatnot. No, oh, maybe there are some things that shouldn't be written down. But <laughs> this is one of them. <laughs> but that would probably solve a lot of issues, or would probably wait and save wasted time and such. To know, like you know, having an idea of like, should we go with this feature? Is there something that we could pull? If how do we go about getting it in, getting it accepted? Having something documented or something where we could, you know, so people don't waste their time doing a lot of work and then finding out no, no one wants this or no, you know, go away. Well, it's I do still plan. will be the case, right? I that, do. It still will be the case, people doing a lot of work and then finding out nobody wants it. Yeah, yeah, but having some idea about, like, you know, documented uh, criteria that says, you know, at least there's a 90% chance or 80% chance that you might actually get in, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> well, yeah, if, I, I will move all this stuff into a documentation file, put it in the documentation directory, but the words around that thing I just said will be guided. You know, we really shouldn't be putting stuff in the tree until it's perfect. Well, sorry, this is the real world. Now, how many do you express that in formal document? I don't know. So I, I have a more general question. Now, once we have the MM tree, do we want to create sub hierarchy like the networking guys do or drivers guys do? Or we continue to have separate trees, say, for my MM block, for Willis, say, page cache, and so on? Okay. So do, do, do we want to merge everything in the end into the MEM tree or we continue to keep separate tree for separate MEM subsystems? Well, MEM block is sort of its own little world. world I've ne I don't think I've ever had a conflict with a MEM block tree. I, got a nasty I don't have many patches, right? So. I get a nasty email from... I mean, if you want to get me to pull on the MEM block tree, I can do so, or you can just send it to Linus independently, as, as Vlastimir does with Slab. I'll, I'll continue to send to Linus independently. Whatever works. But well. larger question, like, will this tree probably will create more conflict or will be a base for, for different work on top of it, so does it make sense to merge Willis tree into a MEM tree? Which tree? Willis tree? Well, I wish Willis would stop writing patches. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I, I found the on switch. Um, I, I, I also wish I would stop writing patches. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, obviously folios have been hugely disruptive from all, 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 all points of view. Um, I think it's gone quite well considering. It could have gone so much worse. I, I, I've been really pleasantly surprised with how few bugs there have been. I was expecting this to be far harder than it has been. Um, but I think 
I, 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 I think I'm almost done with the hugely conflicting changes between MM and FS and this and that and the other. I think things are going to um, settle down, at least for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and I, th I think a large part of the problem we, we, we've been having is that you weren't using a Git tree before now. Um, and I th so the, the future MM patches that I have, and indeed the MM patches I have for this cycle, I'm, I'm sending to you. I'm not planning on having, on, on doing a git pull to Linus for MM folio patches. Mm -hmm. Now for file system folio patches, I am going to be doing a git pull for Linus. Um, most of the people in this room will not have seen those patches because you're not subscribed to Linux FS Devel. And that's fine, you, you don't need to be, that's, you know, you're not, you're not file system developers. Um, and there are going to be, and there are some, some conflicts, and I've, 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 I've marked them as such, and uh, <laughs> Stephen Bothwell has run into them, and he's, he's followed the instructions in the patches that says, just drop this patch because there's a conflicting change over in Andrew's tree. It's the swap read page stuff that uh, was definitely needed, and I'm so happy it's gone in, and I, I wish it had gone in you know, years ago, but you know, time. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I, 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 think, I think that I will continue to run a Git tree, but it won't contain very many patches which conflict with memory management, because I'm going to be funneling most of my memory management changes through Andrew. Through, through what? You. Uh, we have Mel online who would like to speak up, so if we can give him some time. Uh, the, the final bullet point I wrote for myself is, okay, we have this nice non-rebasing MM stable tree. Mm, what use is it? Um, we don't really want people to base work off it. I prefer to base off master so everything's flat and I can merge it and thank God for Git re re re. Um, so I don't really anticipate that many people will do their work off it. If you're someone like Willie who's got some super patch that bashes, bash, that bashes on everything, then he'd, rather, he'd be better off looking for conflicts with the MM unstable tree, which is everything which it plans to go in the merge window. Um, but you know, I don't know, it's there and we'll figure it out as we go along. Yeah, Mel, go ahead. Um, I very strongly suggest against uh, defining a criteria for why a patch set could be merged because once any criteria is actually specified, it's something that can be gamified. Um, so, yeah, okay. It, it, it's, it, once you lay it out, it kind of says these are the rules, we will try and gamify those rules. And it's, it's something that shows up to some extent, uh, well, to a much lesser extent in scheduler land, in CPU scheduler land, where people try and like gamify what the criteria are and get like slapped down repeatedly over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that it is um, really something that you should do. But in terms of the, uh, the, the rebasing versus non-rebasing thing, and when things are considered stable or not stable, uh, Linus's criteria for uh, allowing um, a tree or a, a git pull to be pulled in is based on has this thing been tested or not. So if there is an RC2 uh, stable tree and then there is stuff that needs to be ripped out and it needs to be uh, redone on a, 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 against a later RC, then so be it. At least in, um, in MM, in memory management, it's relatively rare for patches to conflict with each other directly. In scheduler land, there can be subtle interdependencies between different series that go in, so they tend to layer stuff on top of each other, or they say it should be done against at the latest sketch tip that should be done at any given time. But that, that problem rarely happens, at least in my experience in MM. Most of the series are actually independent of each other. And if it comes to the case that uh, we need to rip out something in RC4 and RC5 and the baseline moves, that's fine, as long as there isn't a rebase in RC8 or in RC9 uh, where the accepted patches get reassembled. So like stuff coming in and out is 
is just not that severe of a problem. If it needs to be pulled out and we need to, and the uh, MM stable uh, gets rebased at RC4, RC5, I don't think that should be considered a major problem. Just to do that on an as needs basis. Exactly. And like, it would be kind of like a flag day. It kind of says, okay, the base, if somebody was working off MM stable and there's a major disruption in RC4, well, then too bad. Uh, the, the figures will have to be, whatever figures that you use to justify that your series go in will just have to be redone. And we would hope they'd be relatively rare. But at least my primary working workflow right now is that I do everything against RC1 and I do piles of individual series. Some of them are MM based, some of them are scheduler based. As according as each one in, uh, individually passes testing, I assemble them to make sure that they all work in combination, which is particularly important in scheduler, less important in MM. Um, but like if something needs to get thrown out, it gets thrown out and so just make sure that the end result is still okay. And that's fine up until you're at least at RC5. Once you're at RC5, I find that there's pretty much no point trying to send a new series at all. I might as well just wait till the next merge window. Right. Well, well, it depends how big a change it is from one to the next. But um, I think for an individual developer, uh, uh, if you want to do runtime testing, RC2 could be a bit flaky. I think the best approach there would be for you to just locally merge up with Linux's latest RC6 and do your testing Right, you do your runtime testing on the result of that merge, even though your patch set remains based on RC2. And of course, Stephen's going to do that as well. He's going to integrate our changes with the latest leading edge Linux kernel, and we'll get the runtime testing results back from that. One final note I little had, I always had there, there is one little tree which um, is special, I will be maintaining, often I get these patches which are kernel wide, you know, somebody renames everything or does some stupid shit or, or it, it, it explicitly works on patches which are pending in Linux next or something. So I will have a little queue, which will probably always be a, a, guilt, a, a, a quilt queue of kernel wide patches and then I'll sort of independently feed that through the back door to Stephen for inclusion in Linux next and uh, send it to Linus probably as a quilt patch bomb very late in the merge window. But uh, I would be very reluctant to have significant MM material in that series. But basically, MM stuff should be based on RC2, not Linux next. But does that include um, like file system interactions? Like, or, or you're talking about like things that are actually kernel wide? Like, what? What trips what trips it into that workflow is when because the only damn thing I can get the patch to apply to and make any sense is the next next. <laughs> Eventually, I reached a point where nothing's working here, so I'm going to move the patch to behind the next next and magic it applies. That's the main criteria. So as long as it functionally makes sense and uh, syntactically applies, yeah, I'm going to queue it up behind the next next. It's very much a moving target and I wait for things to stabilize at the end of the merge window before presenting it to Linus. That's all I got. Yeah, so, so I would like to get back to uh, the uh, thing that Mike has uh, brought up and that's about sub-maintainers because uh, we currently have few um, areas that are handled by a git tree and uh, for, for some reason I, I still cannot cope really well with, uh, uh, with people bypassing you and sending uh, pull requests to Linux directly because to me it seems like um, a potential problem long term but by completely balkanizing the, the whole MM and not having a coherent picture of, uh, of the area and uh, uh, do you think that it would make sense to uh, have growing number of sub maintainers so that you do not have to care yourself about those areas and uh, Made it. Es essentially yeah. pulling from them as they ask you so you get those nice let's say pull requests with uh, the descri descriptions of 
what the changes are so that you can, when you are sending your pull requests, you do not have to care about those high-level descriptions. And um, if you are okay with that, what would be the, the where that work would be gathered? Like, uh, it would be the, the stable branch where you essentially when you are getting a pull request from oh, yeah. a yeah. sub-maintainer, you just merge that into this stable branch and then once you are done with the current, um, let's say, uh, merge plan, then you send a pull request from that branch or how do you env envision that thing? Yeah, that would work. I, I wouldn't want to put in stable branch until it is stable, until you know we, we agree that this is hopefully unchanging from now until the, until the merge window. So I'd initially put it in the unstable branch because it's unstable. And then as we see the appropriate manner of you come in, then at some point in time we'll agree to move it into, into the non-rebasing stable tree. Okay. That sounds like a great improvement to me. Um, if I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for myself, but um, I guess that this would make the process much more transparent also for others. and. Uh, that would be a cool move. Yeah. I, I still want to see that's had the appropriate manner of view from the appropriate people and had enough runtime in Linux Max. And, and I'd, I'd still like to say, you know, I think it's time to move Michelle's branch from unstable to stable. I'm going to do that three days from now. If I don't see any objections, I'm doing it. I still go through the same process. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I mean, uh, there will be likely a lot of things to be uh, sent through patches not through the Git tree, but uh, we seem to have some areas that uh, are maintaining their sub little thing. And uh, yeah, that was my primary uh, concern that uh, just to grow that um, sense of sub maintainers that might even encourage more people to be actively maintaining their areas because you would be pulling from them like as we see in other uh, uh, other areas. Yeah, I mean, I'd still like them to follow the same diligence. You know, all those little reviewed buys, or those little act buys. Got let Adam make sure all the appropriate people are CC that the change log additions come in, that every little fix is rolled in and doesn't get dropped on the floor somehow. Yeah, even if you're not delegating the actual code movement, like would it make sense to declare? Somewhere like the the review team, because I I know when I <laughs> I know when I added a new memory zone, Dave Hansen got a got a ping from Andrew saying Dan uh, or a, a few people like kind of in your in the uh, MM inner circle like got notified like hey is this okay should we back this out? Um, are people aware that they're maybe maybe they already know that they're kind of in that reviewer team, but it, it kind of works from the um, uh, like how the x86 MM side works with anything. There, we, there's like Andy, Peter, Dave. We, they, you talk, you talk to them before it goes to the tip tree. So they're not actually, they're not actually sending code to tip, but they're, they're the gate, not, not gatekeepers, but they're like the review team that, kind of. Uh, well, the maintainers file can capture that accurately enough. I, I don't think there is any sort of formal siloization there, I don't think it's appropriate because so many people are so busy and doing stuff, and so it basically. It, I end up making a judgment call on where things will be adequately reviewed. It might be by a regular person or a part-timer. But I don't think having hard and fast go-no-go -go team would be workable. And to some extent, you know, people may end up reviewing it post facto and we, we've still got those months to, to fix it up. And also, backtracking a long way, I talk about the, the readiness of a tree to become stable. Uh, we, need, we need to agree that it's, um, that it's a desirable feature for Linux and that it's, it's ready enough. Cleanups. Cleanups are wonderful. We all have cleanups. But cleanups can be deferred indefinitely. I don't think cleaning up the code should be a gating issue. If you think, move this function here, rename this to that, and that sort of thing, yeah, fine, it's desirable. But we can do that in our next RC. As long as the code's got at runtime, you know, cleanups can be deferred. So I don't think that should block inclusion, migration of a patch set into the stable branch. Um, I just had a 
a question. I, I thought I, um, before the, today, I thought I had a rough understanding of where to base my patch sets, you know, at, at any given time. You know, right now, maybe say, okay, today RC1 is out, so I know I should base my patch set on RC1 or, or but now uh, I've lost that confidence. <laughs> and I was wondering if maybe you could just kind of run down and say, okay, you know, here's the situation where you would base it on RC1, here's the situation where you'd base it on Linux Next, here's one where you'd go for MM Stable. Well, my preference would be off, um, off MM Git's master branch. I mean, I could draw a line in the sand and say, I'll cut RC2. So that RC2 will be my target for merging these things. But you, you, you can work against Linux's most recent release, probably and things will be fine. So to a large extent, it's whatever's most convenient for you, what makes most sense for you. Probably not Linux next, that's a, that's a stretch. Yeah, so we have lost him on the chat, and he, he's saying that I think for pull from a sub maintainers, the reviews would be already gathered by them, and the pull would go directly to stable at that point of time, or at least that, that's his understanding. So, so yeah. uh, treating it as any other patch, patch set or any other patches uh, wouldn't really save much work for you. So uh, That's fair enough. Uh, as long as that, I would like to see that patch set, and we're talking about the slab series here, has already been in Linux Next for a long time. So I assume that's being independently included by Stephen. So even before he's got all the reviews coming in, hopefully if this stuff has already been rolling in Linux next for a week or two. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the, yeah, the slab tree is also continuously uh, being exposed to Linux next. Uh, because the, the question would be if, if to also do this exposure th through your tree or independently or uh, and only the 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 end result would be uh, going through the mm stable tree i guess we can look at how other trees with sub maintainers do that could but main slabs pretty damn standalone uh, i think what we've been doing for the past few months has worked okay I, i've never observed any conflict between them i get a nasty email from stephen um so I think just keep doing what we're doing and just treat it as an independent branch. I just send it directly to Stephen to Linus. I don't think I would add any value. Okay, that works for me. But uh, the question was if there was uh, more uh, sub maintainer sub trees, like for example MCG, or whether that should really break the MM3 to pieces that would be independent or or whether we should strive to unify them in the end. Have I gone quiet? No. There are a lot of peripheral stuff in MM. I mean, memory hot plug, slab, Z3 fold, ZS Malak, all that stuff, which is pretty standalone. But the core material, MCG, VM scan, pager lock, M map, huge TLB. Uh, it's just all, everything's smeared together. I think decoupling those amongst maintainers, amongst tr trees would be, would be a nightmare. A few years back when I was trying to mimic your tree with uh, with uh, Gitri, I mm -hmm. essentially was doing that by topic branches and then merge things together. And I was quite surprised that uh, conflicts about those different areas, for example, MCG or uh, Hotplug, were really minimal. So do you think it would make sense to at least try that the approach or? Uh, Maybe. I'd like to try this approach for a few months and see how it goes. But um, I mean, if it makes sense, it'll, if, if, if it'll give us something better than what we have, yeah, why not? OK, because I believe that we can sit with, uh, with Roman and, and uh, 
and Johannes and uh, create a MCG part for that. That would be probably one of those uh, larger source of patches in your tree. And uh, yeah, for memory hot plug, I, I believe that uh, David and Oscar are, are doing quite a lot of work right there. So maybe they can come up with something. And uh, yeah, if you are willing to try that approach, then yeah, what worse can happen than we just throw everything away and, and just apply those patches anyway. Yeah, well, let's, let me get this, get this stabilized and go through a couple of cycles with it and, and then start looking at moving that stuff in. Yeah, MemCG does have its sticky little paws in a lot of places. That one worries me a bit. So, so what, what I wanted to bring up in a context was something that was raised upstream that especially people that are new to the kernel or to MM, they sometimes don't have a clue who to CC. And I mean, if you do get maintainers on a specific file, you're mostly out of luck. I mean, you get you and then like 200 people that committed code sometime. Yeah. So um, the, the, the question was then uh, whether we actually want to define, for example, in maintainers, some MM subsystems and not necessarily at maintainer attacks, but for example, review attacks. And review I, I, attacks, yeah. I, I was actually proposing to do that soon, for example, for memory hot block, like just the most important files that I care about, and then I might just get, like, CC it more often, um, so to say. I was wondering if, if that should be then something we should discuss in general. I mean, I, I'll propose a patch to do that, but maybe it makes sense for other subsystems as well. Yeah, fine. I think get, I think get maintainer and the maintainer's tree handles that pretty well. The files you're interested in, yeah, put your name in there and you'll get even more email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but then I don't have to dig through the Linux MM and like, find out that there is something interesting after right. three weeks when catching up. So. Yeah. Part, of, part of my life is making sure the right people will see seed. Just a small note, like I think adding uh, documentation files and test files into maintainer's file actually raises awareness of just like people don't know that they exist and like adding it, it makes it more obvious. I don't think I followed that, sorry. Uh, I'm saying bit. that like just listing uh, test tests like which exist like self, uh, for example, MEMC group cast self tests or like as a, any, any sort of testing and also like any sort of documentation in the maintainer's file uh, it's a good thing just to kind of raise an awareness that they exist. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For C groups, I added like a self test like recently, and I think we should do this more often. Okay. Yep. Am I done here? But it was online. Mel, talk to us. Can it be heard? You, can you hear me? Afraid so. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll take that with a mixed blessing. Um, I exist in a maintainer file uh, with an R entry under scheduler, and it's for like just one specific config parameter uh, for anything scheduler related, where if something is coming in that's is affecting that config that I meant to review is it's not impossible to have the same for uh, premium management. Now we don't have the same granularity um, or the same breakdown, but we can document in the maintainer's file that someone is not necessarily a sub maintainer, but if you are touching a particular part of the memory management that you should at least get an act from this person, are some acknowledgements that they have at least seen it. So it's a significant part of my role to make sure the right people have looked at it and rubbed it in their nose. So you all have a lot of maple tree reviewing to do. <laughs> Can't argue with the logic. Mm. We don't need I get to sit down yet? Oh, good. No? Okay. So um, when, when, when you send maybe a larger patch set, sometimes you have to set certain things up before you actually get to the meat of what you're doing. And um, I'm just wondering how 
the message in the beautiful, pretty cover letter uh, will get merged in in the new plan. Uh, how is it handled in the uh, upstreaming? Well, you know, I tend to put it inside the first patch, and I think I will continue to do that. Uh, okay. <laughs> it means it means that, like the maple tree, for instance, I'm setting up a test framework at first, so that you're going to have like all this information about how the maple tree is going to be, you know, mm -hmm. making sliced bread uh, for the first time, versus uh, and 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 it's going to be in the patch that says like uh, add print error to. Uh, uh, the Radix tree uh, test infrastructure. So I was just wondering if that could be handled in a different way. Yeah, I mean, that that's, yeah, it's a bit silly to do that, but you, you can just have the one line of C patch five for details. Okay. Uh, well, that would have to link back to the mailing list, but. Um, have the info. Hmm? We'll have the info in. Well, in the Z in my patch one, I, I have a link to the zero of n as well as the link to this particular patch. I always do that, so we've got a link to the head of series as well. So yeah, people will figure it out. But to your, uh, but then should your first patch be a documentation patch, back to the mic request, and then because a, the, a lot of times there's like really good details in the in the change log, like why is this not in documentation? It's like a good narrative. Well, well, I usually the, I put that with the whole the the, the data structure, right? So the code goes in and the documentation, and then the next patch was a huge test patch, um, so I mean I guess I could put the big patch first and then the setup for the test that comes next? Uh, or, I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of, it's just kind of, other, other places in the kernel, they have this, the merge, right? And, and then that goes in the, the git pull or whatever, right? So you have the, the one that actually has no code, but it's just like a huge documentation on what, what's going on in the next 50 patch, 70 maybe, who knows? But, no. again, but I, I guess I, I, I've seen when you pulled in the change log, you, like Andrew tends to pull it into the patch that makes the most sense and I'm like, oh, I'm glad you saved my, saved my cover letter because <laughs> I would have forgot what this does, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. I kind of think leaving the merge request kind, kind of leaves it stranded. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it might get lost in history, that's true, right? Like, yeah. you, unless you dig through the git log for specific information, but usually most of it, hopefully, is in in the code slash documentation, right? I mean, mm. apparently I'm the only one who does that, but 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 other people are going to start today, right? So. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.